Just uh, take you to one of our stories making headlines. Ekuleni Mayor Mzwandile Mastina is visiting the Kempton Park informal settlement that was ravaged by a fire last night. Let's go live to our reporter Sipa Kema in Kempton Park for the latest. Sipa, good morning to you once again. Uh, government officials have come and uh, um, as the community had uh, wanted them to come in and assist them with uh, this uh, really tragic incident. Uh, uh, what can you tell us? Well, good morning to you, Paul. Once again, as you said, that we're here uh, outside Panoma, where we saw a fire that ravaged and ripped through uh, the Max informal settlement, leaving hundred, over hundred people, hundreds and hundreds of people, uh, homeless and destitute. Here, as you can see, right behind me, them they're trying to pick up the pieces and just trying to uh, salvage what is left of some of their belongings and some of the corrugated iron, so that they could start rebuilding their homes. But as you had said. We do have the mayor of Ekurulene municipality joining us here. Uh, to, uh, he's here to assess the situation and also uh, to give us an idea of how things are going to move forward. Uh, mayor, thank you so much for joining us. But if you could tell us, let's start first with what is happening currently here. What is the plan and the way forward with, for the residents of this informal settlement? Well, uh, the plan is to assist rebuild this uh, informal settlement. As you can see that it was ravaged uh, by fire last night. Our disaster team did everything possible to pull down the fire, as you can see. Uh, there was a danger of uh, even factories being affected. We are happy that our team did an excellent job and there is no life that was lost here, uh, but the damage uh, is huge. So uh, our task now as government, uh, NGOs, uh, churches and private sector is to make sure that we rebuild this particular community and give back the dignity of our people here. Uh, you know that uh, our people currently are basically trying to salvage whatever little they can uh, they can find from uh, from uh, from this informal settlement. Uh, we have a plan of uh, relocating them into a safe shelter where we are also going to register them. Uh, those that have lost their IDs and other important documents will get to be assisted but most importantly we want to make sure that people are, are being given food, are being given blankets uh, in the meantime but we'll also ensure that uh, whatever that has been salvaged uh, is secured uh, so that as the process of rebuilding starts. We, 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 every family member don't start from scratch. Uh, so, but uh, you know, uh, it's very clear to us that the problem of human settlement in Egurulene is huge. Uh, that is why the call of 100,000 houses uh, was an important call at the start of the administration. We have been doing a bid. We've built over 20, uh, 28,000 houses. We've given over 18,000 stands. But that is not enough. Uh, we must continue to accelerate that program, including the work that we are already doing around the uh, um, re-blocking of the informal settlement, uh, uh, electrifying the informal settlement. Of the 119, already 35 informal settlements have been electrified. So we want to make sure that we accelerate all those programs as we move towards the end of the term so that we can uh, live a, a peaceful environment in our area because the informal settlements are here to, uh, are here, are here to stay. Now, when you're talking about rebuilding, when you're saying rebuilding uh, this particular area, are you talking about them uh, erecting more informal settlements? Of course, um, there, there is nothing else we can do because firstly, this is a privately owned land that is being contested in the court of law. There is very little we can do in terms of provision of services. Anything we do here is temporary until such time that we find a, suitably, a, a suitable piece of land where we can begin to give people stands, uh, where they can build their own homes. So that's, the long, uh, that's a medium to long term plan that we have as a city. So we're quite confident that uh, whatever that is going to happen now is to make sure that if, uh, human beings here, they over four I mean, over 900 people that are here, they, they do have shelter for uh, for now. But uh, we are finding an alternative. You know, we're talking to our teams. We've established a job that is beginning to fast track some of the things that uh, we're delaying to ensure that we can move this settlement because it's sitting in a very dangerous piece of land. There's a lot of chemicals in the farms here. It's not a suitable land for human settlement uh, in the starting place. And now just one more question. Maya. I know that the community is just a bit apprehensive about moving to the halls and the civic center as they were asked to do so yesterday. They want to safeguard this land. Have there been any provisions made to ensure that they will get this land back should they move to temporary structures or maybe to temporary shelter uh, for the time being while the rebuilding is happening? Well, the, the, co the coincidence is that uh, there is a court order that uh, was actually saying that these people must move as of yesterday, uh, when they, before the area was banned. 
Um, so, so we are busy negotiating with the landowner so that we can ensure that there is a temporal relief so that uh, allow us this government working together with him uh, to find an alternative because these people have been settling here uh, for over two, three decades already. So it's not a new settlement. It's been here for, for, for a long time. So it's important that our people must relax. They must know that we will work with them in ensuring that at least uh, there is order, there is peace. And that's why, uh, because we, we, we can't have people uh, staying in the, in the street. There are kids here. We've got to ensure that at least uh, we create a conducive environment for our people. But whatever happens here, our government is here to secure this land. There will be no uh, surprises that, that that will happen. But the process of engaging the landowner will proceed because uh, I'm sure wherever he's sitting, he think that this is an opportunity to get rid of the people that are here. But the law is very clear that once you want to get rid of the people in the informal settlement, you, know, you must provide them with an alternative. So that's what we should be working on uh, together with him. And we are saying to our people, we are calling for calm. The leadership have met and they've agreed that they will cooperate with government uh, so that uh, the jog uh, become uh, activated so that we can clear this place because fire can still uh, erupt uh, from it is. As you can see, some are trying to rebuild. We are saying, no, let's not rebuild and ensure. Let's ensure that uh, we deal with these areas until such time that uh, the area is conducive for those uh, temporary structures has to be erected here. But the long-term plan is to make sure that we provide pieces of land where these people can build their own homes. All right. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, that is the Mayor of Ekurulini Municipality, Mzwani Masina, uh, saying that the government does have a long-term plan, short, medium and long-term plan for the people. Short-term plan being uh, to take them to temporary shelter for the time being while they're still trying to rebuild and also clear out the rubble here uh, caused by the fire and also, of course, uh, negotiating with the owner of this land. As we had said earlier on, uh, when we were speaking to some of the community members, they were worried that this piece of land might be gone uh, by the time they come back to rebuild here. So they're in negotiations with the owners of the land to ensure that the people will have this land by the time to come back. And of course, long term being the housing crisis that we've seen not just in Ekuruleni, but in South Africa, of course, uh, they're looking to build houses uh, for people so that to ensure that this disaster does not continue to happen. Sipa, as the mayor calls for calm and promises that there will be no surprises when it comes to um, that community returning to that land, um, how is he being received by community members and is he expected to address them at all? Yes, he will be, of course, assessing and walking through the rubble and also talking to the community. He's already been in uh, the talks with the community. I'm just going to ask Luyanda uh, to show you some of the community members and where they spent the, um, the night last night. Like, as you can see, over to my left, right here, right in the middle of the freeway here, uh, as you can see, the M45, uh, you can see that there's families on the side of the road with their belongings. He was speaking to some of the people here, uh, well-received. However, uh, where we were earlier on, on, which is on to my right. Uh, that's where majority of the community were actually angry and emotional. Uh, they're the ones who were saying that they feel as though nothing has been done for them. So once he goes inside, as you can see him now uh, making his way uh, through the structures and the corrugated iron uh, to see and assess the damage uh, that has been caused by the fire, we will then be able to see how that part of the community um, receives him. But so far, uh, the community has received him well and they're listening to him and he's been listening to the people and what is needed and what we've also seen on the ground uh, is that there are people who have been who are lining up and their names are being taken down uh, for of course uh, for provisions that will be given uh, by the municipality but not only that uh, as you know the community had asked that if home affairs could come and also assist uh, some of them have lost their identity documents uh, have lost uh, the of course uh, sasa cars as well so this is where most of them are lining up, getting registered, getting their names down uh, so that they're able to get back uh, the ID documents and Home Affairs can assist with that. Thank you so much, uh, Sipa Kema. Let's uh, leave it there. Our reporter Sipa Kema in Kempton Park, they're giving us the latest in terms of a fire that uh, um, left uh, 250 shacks uh, burnt to the ground, as you can see from the visuals on the screen there. Now, Ekuruleni Mayor Mzwandile Masina has arrived there to listen to the grievances and also assess the situation, uh, saying that uh, there's no need for panic, calling for calm and saying that 
that there will be no surprises, that uh, the, the community members can trust that they will be returned to that uh, piece of land, saying that government will be in talks with the owner of the land to ensure that uh, they are given sufficient time to rebuild their lives and also talking about all sorts of plans to um, ensure the safety and security of those who lost their homes.